Hey, this is Pastor Jamie Tickle of First Baptist Church in Cherokee, Kansas. Glad you're along for this uh, short little broadcast on YouTube. Uh, we're just excited to be able to give you an opportunity to listen to a little bit of what we do here in Cherokee. Uh, we just hope that you enjoy this, that it's a blessing to you. And feel free to leave a comment. Uh, free, feel free to get in touch with our church via the website, www.cherokeechurch.org. From our website, you can listen to entire unedited messages. And if you're in our listening audience, you can tune in to 103.5 FM uh, for Truth For Today that plays every Sunday morning at 8.30. God bless. Uh, this definitely is not Peter walking on the water. This is not him cutting off the centurion's ear. This is definitely not him forsaking all to follow Christ as we've studied already. But this definitely is important. And what I titled it this morning was The Revelation of Peter. And for those of you that think I messed up, you think, well, I thought it was the Revelation of John. Well, Peter has something revealed to him. He has three things that I believe are revealed to Peter in these few verses by Christ. And I think that it would be good for each one of us also to be able to draw from this, recognizing that what Christ revealed to Peter, that we should also learn a lesson from, because what Peter was going through and experiencing, we also as believers can experience and do experience. So I want you to join with me. Look as we read in verse 31 of chapter 22, down to verse 34. It says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. Let's stop in verse 34. This scene that we look at is an interesting moment in the, in the life of Jesus and the life of the disciples. This is drawing down to the end of their earthly time with Jesus in that bodily form. This is coming to the moment in, in the Bible, in the Gospels, in the, in the life of Christ, where He is now entered into Jerusalem, where for the third time He has already told His disciples He was going to Jerusalem, He was going to be betrayed, he was ultimately going to suffer and die in Jerusalem. So they have already entered into Jerusalem. And while in Jerusalem, just before all of this has transpired, just before those words were spoken, the Bible tells us that Jesus had instituted the Last Supper. He had observed Passover with them and then instituted what we call communion. He, he gave them the representation of the body and the blood that we still observe today in a recognition of His broken body and shed blood for us. And He's already done all that. It was a very intimate moment with him and the disciples there. We know through the other gospels that during this time he also served them in the most humbling form by taking a cloth and, and beginning to wash their feet, taking truly upon him the form of a servant, the apostle Paul tells us. So in this story, all of that has happened. And these could very well be some of the last words that Jesus was speaking to them in that upper room where they instituted the Lord's Supper and celebrated Passover. He had already had that moment. Then he turns to find his disciples arguing about something. Yes, Christians can argue about things. And indeed, this was the case. And I want to just draw your attention, since you got your Bibles open already, I want to draw your attention to verse 24 of the same chapter. Because the Bible tells us what they were arguing about. It says in verse 24, Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. Now isn't that ironic? That these men in this large upper room, having recognized and heard and believed that Jesus is the Messiah, that He is the Son of God, recognizing and hearing that He's going to Jerusalem and something's about to happen, whether they fully comprehended exactly what was going to happen or not, they knew they were on the verge of something. Jesus has served them by washing their feet. He has instituted the Lord's Supper. He's had this very intimate moment in conversation with them. And now all they're doing is arguing about who is going to be the greatest in heaven. They were so concerned about them that Jesus addresses it. 
And clearly Jesus is addressing it. What he says in verse 31 is a clear response to what the disciples were arguing about. Jesus has talked to them and gave them discourse on service. In verses 24 down to verse 30, he talked to them about what true greatness was. But then in verse 31, he reminds them, he reveals something to them. He pulls back the curtains, if you will, and exposes something that they hadn't noticed before. I'm sure in your lives you've all had revelations before, right? You had a a revelation and maybe something you didn't see before, then you're seeing it. And I'm not just simply speaking in a spiritual sense, but maybe you, you and your spouse. Maybe even in your relationship to them, you had a revelation. Maybe something you were doing wrong that you never noticed before. Or something your spouse was doing wrong. I know that you don't ever recognize faults in your spouse. But we have those revelations. They were always there, but we just didn't see them. And that's what Jesus is doing here. He's revealing to Peter. He's pulling back the curtains, if you will, and exposing something. Let me just, if you're taking notes this morning, this isn't the first point. But I do want to just show you something that when we start worrying about if we're going to be the greatest, when all of the focus is on us, when we are directing all of our attention and all of our resources in self-promotion, let me just show you just a few things that happen to that. Look in verse number 24. When they're asking about who's going to be the greatest, notice what Jesus says in verse 24. He says, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. What Jesus is saying is, when you're wanting to be the greatest, you're looking like Gentile kings. The Gentile kings were known to have not known Christ. They were considered pagans. And what he's saying is that you're acting like a world that doesn't know me. You're you're acting like someone that does not understand the spiritual concepts that I've been teaching you for three and a half years. So let me remind you that when we start being absorbed with ourselves, when we live our lives and exhaust our resources for the purpose of self-promotion, what we're doing is looking like godless people all around us because that's natural. And Jesus wasn't calling them or us to be natural. He was calling us to be weird by putting ourselves aside while promoting Him. Notice the second thing in verse 26. He says, "...but not so among you, on the contrary." He who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he who governs, let him be as one who serves. We want not to be like the godless. We don't want to promote ourselves for the purpose of having other people below us. Jesus was saying quite the contrary. You are not to be over people, but you are to be the greatest, which is to be serving. Notice this third and final quick little thing. He says in verse 27, For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as one who serves. I believe the third problem that we have when we are promoting ourselves and worrying about us involved in self-promotion, what we do is we forget to see Christ. Christ says, I am the one who is indeed the greatest. You guys are in that room arguing about who's the greatest when the greatest is right among you. And they weren't noticing the one while they were promoting themselves. So that's the attitude. That's what they're fighting about. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our short little broadcast here on YouTube. We hope that it's been a blessing for you. 